It's time for us to go through the papers this morning on The Breakfast. On Plus TV Africa, we have Tunde Kolawale, who's on standby. He joins us via phone. It's good to have you join us this morning. Tunde Kolawale. Thanks for having me in the United That's right. Uh, let's start off with the leadership newspaper. And on the leadership, the, the bold headline reads, APC acts for extra time to tackle security challenges. Is that not interesting? Uh, that's what you find boldly written on the leadership this morning. As bandits go bazak attacks Buhari's convoy on advance trip to Katsina, kills five abducts cars in Kaduna villages. Gunmen kill two policemen, abduct Chinese and Quara in Katsina. As a writer, as you find underneath the caption on the leadership and PDP says no plan to buy votes in 2023 elections. Uh, does that mean that, you know, there used to be vote buying? Is, is the PDP saying that they have been involved in vote buying? When you say you have no plans to buy votes, have you been buying votes prior to this time? Okay, uh, you have banditry, Katsina shots, 69 primary health care facilities, and CSOs blame lingering fuel scarcity on impunity and corruption. Just as you have those who have been saddled, I mean, uh, you have men who have been summoned, Minister of Finance, uh, the CBN governor, amongst others, and, and they refuse to show up to answer some questions. Hush Poppy U.S. court fixes September 21 for judgment. And that's what it is. Okoa says, issues around my certificate politicized. Again, INEC threatens to cancel any election disrupted by hoodlums. Who are hoodlums and who are these hoodlums? The Nigerians can actually find. But we move away from that one. We also have the Punch newspaper this morning. And on the front page of the Punch newspaper, the caption reads, COVID-19 cases jumped by 67% in two weeks. Lagos NMA and NARD once again laxity demands protective measures. Coronavirus, not on holiday. I mean, we all thought coronavirus is on holiday. It's still around, uh, says the virologists and a group. The writers you find underneath the board caption on the punch. Terrorists attack Buhari's advanced team and kills two policemen. I like how the punch captions it. And Lagos Kanu, FCT Ogun lead telecom subscribers growth. State chairman rejects WK's CAM's anti ius plot. Uh, another headline says the NSIA foreign firm signs $50 million anti carbon deal. Debt, inflation, forex killing economy. LCCI warns the federal government. Debts, inflation, and forex are responsible for uh, where the economy is. What economy is what you want to ask? Is it the entire economy of the country or the Lagos economy? Subsidy probe reps summons Emefeli and Silver Amit and Carry didn't show up. Didn't show up. Presidential poll or B. Kwankoso negotiations dead. And you also find another uh, caption saying, Gone men abduct Chinese at Kwa Quarry and kill policemen. 1,300 Kanu intending pilgrims still stranded. Why? Lagos couple lose four children to midnight fire. Very unfortunate. And Candace owns Ondo Pastor arrested for alleged abduction. The headlines you find this morning on the Punch newspaper. Uh, quickly, we'll move our attention from the Punch and let's find out what's making it big on the Nation newspaper this morning. WK rejects one-on-one -on -one parley with Antiku over crisis. <laughs> Rivers Governors asks team to negotiate with presidential candidates. And that's boldly written. Away from that, you find Oshun 2022. Please, boss not sacked. APC SA drums up support for Oyetola. Oshogbu Mwanak once again violence. And ZLP candidate alleges pre-election vote buying. Really? And traveling 
Buhari's guards and gun battle with bandits. Uh, this unfortunate incident happened yesterday. Judge sat for dissolving marriage and marrying women. Gunman kill police inspector abduct Chinese inquirer. How to avert another recession by LCCI. They have talked about, we're talking about the uh, Chambers of Commerce. That's the Lagos Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So putting out that recipe for it. They've also blamed it on inflation and debt and, and also foreign exchange. But that's it this morning on the Nation newspaper. And we also have the Daily Independent newspaper. We'll just run through the big headlines here. And on the Daily Independent, WK Beaker's soft pedal and agreed to work for Tico's victory. It's a different uh, perspective right here. You have party charges Nigerians to vote APC out. Presidential guards for an attack on Buhari's advance team to Daura ahead of the Salah celebration. 27 years after, federal government considers establishing new Nigeria shipping line and oil industry on the sea from multiple fronts. OPEC boss is quoted. You have missing certificate. I made second best resort in 1976. Okowa is quoted to say, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I existed, in, you know, 1976, that's a lot of time. And uh, in security, federal government can vast states' cooperation on ranching. NSIA signs a $50 million carbon reduction deal with Netherlands firm. I uh, find that more uh, interesting conversation surrounding all of that. And we quickly take this. 5G development concerns over health hazards continues as NCC reassures Nigerians. You also have, we have devised ways of rendering thugs useless during polls. INEC is good to say. I mean, should I be saying this because, you know, it's more like it's a security issue, but and it's too much of information. Community issues seven day ultimatum to us, DPC over rent. The headlines you find this morning on the front pages of the National Dailies has been made available by our newspaper vendor. We turn quickly to our guests who joins us via phone this morning. Tunde Kolawale, it's good to have you join us. Thank you for having me. All right, Dan, let's go straight to the crux of the matter. On the leadership, the APC is asking for an extra time to tackle security challenges in Nigeria. How do you respond to this, knowing that the APC, led by President Mohamed Buhari in 2015, was very strong on security, uh, which was one of the, you know, we're talking about on which grounds the APC won the election, security, economy, and the fight against corruption. Well, uh, honestly speaking, in my own opinion, it's a very shameful thing for the APC to be requesting for additional time to tackle the insecurity that we have in the land. If you look at our history, you will find out that this insecurity began more than 10 years ago. And out of these 10 years, the APC have been in government for about seven years. So, if they have the wherewithal to tackle the insecurity, I would want to argue that the seven years that they have been in power is more than enough to address this insecurity. But rather than the security challenges, Affecting, we are finding out it is now escalating. Previously, it used to be confined to the northeast of the country. Now, no part of Nigeria is safe. Our world is boiling, the southeast is boiling, even here in Lagos. The activities of um, our unemployed youth is also creating very, very serious insecurity for the ordinary citizens. I'm talking about 
the menace of the Okada riders and the influx of people from different parts of the country into Lagos. If you know the number of people that have been lynched all over Lagos, maimed or attacked in traffic uh, robbery and the snatching of bags, telephones and what have you, you will agree with me that Lagos, which used to be the most secure part of the country, is also now on fire. For me, I'm not too sure that the APC has a solution to the insecurity that we have in the land. Before now, they have also argued that once uh, a Tucano or the Tucano aircraft are supplied to them, and certain weapons are provided to them by the American government and some of the other government from where they bought this equipment, they will be able to rein in the rural and the urban bandits that are terrorizing Nigerian system. But lo and behold, some of these equipment have been delivered, but there seems to be no solution to the insecurity in the land. The APC should please, in my humble opinion, turn their request to the Marines. Maybe the Marines will grant the request. For the Nigerian people, 10 years, for 30 years of APC government is enough um, time to have waited for solutions to the insecurity. Except we want to turn the country to Rwanda. That is when we will be saying we will be giving any political party, whether it's the APC or the PDP, some other time to address the insecurity. Well, so, so um, Tunde Kolawale, do you think that yeah. uh, time is actually a challenge? Because you're asking for time. And I know you have mentioned that seven years plus and counting. We're almost saying eight already. It's, uh, time do, 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 you, do you think that time challenge. is a challenge? So if time it is, is not, not a challenge of uh, tackling the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, especially uh, when this was a strong point for this government to come on board, what then is the uh, challenge? Absolutely, time is not the issue. So what's the issue? The, the fundamental issue is this. It's only when you take cognizance of the issue of war. The security people, in my humble opinion, are already overwhelmed. Secondly, Nigeria is a country that nobody wants to die for. There is the absence of patriotism. And the reason why there is absence of patriotism is not perfect. When you see the politicians behave the way that they are behaving, it will be difficult to convince an average Nigerian person to go into the fields and lay down his life. When, even when he does this, he is not only to be remembered, his family is never going to be catered for, and the politicians are not likely to change in the ways and manner they are mismanaging the resources of the country. That is one. Secondly, I would want to say that the politicians in the first instance were the avengers of the insecurity that we have in the land. You know, I keep emphasizing that there is um, two sides of this insecurity. There is the urban insecurity and the rural insecurity. That the book warram, that the kidnappers and the cattle of class have been engaging. When you look at the book warram, for example, it started in the northeast of the country. And at the time the book warram was really his ugly head, the governor, the governor of the state at that period in time even made two of their men commissioners in his government. One was commissioner for intergovernmental relations, interreligious relations, while the other one was in charge of uh, finance. If you also study critically, most the leading political parties that we have in the country today, all of them have uh, private armies 
or let's call it a militia group that help them to enforce whatever they want to impose on the people. They have militia groups that help them to rig elections. And on a daily basis, these militia groups are being empowered financially, materially, and otherwise. So, if you're going to defeat in the security, the first step that will have to be taken is to uh, kind of disarm. Yeah? Tunde, um, yeah. let's also look yeah. at, you, you have mentioned, I mean, the point you started with is the fact that you have the personnel being overwhelmed, but what's going yeah. on? But some people differ. I mean, the argument on this is that uh, it's not that the personnel are overwhelmed or you have persons who are not uh, trained because you have also, on the other hand, saying uh, lack of trained personnel to tackle the insecurity situation that we're faced with. But people are really saying that there's no political will to solve the problem, especially when you have the president as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Do you agree with um, this school of thoughts? Well, some of the points you have mentioned are contributing factors. But the fundamental factors are what I think I have highlighted. The political will is one. If you have a presidency that is not mobile, that uh, is unable to think out a proper solution, or that is indulgent for the insecurity activities that is taking place in the country, then of course, the issue of political will will come in. With regard to training and manpower, I don't think that is an issue. Why do I say it's not an issue? If you look at the performance of the Nigerian security forces, when they go outside Nigeria, especially the UN mission, they've always come back with murder. They've always distinguished them then. Nigerian soldiers were in Liberia, they were in Sierra Leone, they were in Sudan, some of them were in uh, Rwanda, and they came back with loyal. General rank and file distinguish themselves. And if you say it's the issue of personnel, it's 10 years of this insecurity. Not enough to have trained the Nigerian security people on the way and manner to handle the Opan and Rural Gorilla warfare that they have in their hands. I should think 10 years enough to train All right. them. Uh, Tunde Kolawale, uh, great insights you've provided, but we need to move away for the want of time so we're able to uh, look at all the issues on the papers this morning. Uh, quickly, before we look at the case of COVID-19, uh, you have on the Punch newspaper, subsidy probe, rep summons Emefeli, Silva, Ahmed and Kari over, uh, you know, the, the daily consumption, what the country, the, the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, had summoned the Minister of State Petroleum for Petroleum Resources and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, as well as the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, uh, following their refusal to the investigative hearing on the actual daily consumption of premium motor spirit in Nigeria, which is called Petro. Now, if you also look at the Punch newspaper this morning, it talks about civil society blaming uh, the lingering fuel scarcity on impunity and corruption. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I agree with the civil society group that corruption, impunity, and lack of political will is responsible for the challenges of our inability or our inability to manage the petroleum sector in a very prudent and uh, decent manner so as to yield the best results for the average Nigerian people. But the truth of the matter is the APC as a government is not in the position to probe the challenges that we have in that sector. Because if they do, some of their men will be found to be culpable in the challenges that we have in the oil sector. Say, for example, the mefile that they are mentioning, a mefile 
it was alleged that wanted to contest the presidential election. I mean, to contest uh, to be the president of Black Biara for the APC during the recent APC convention. The implication of that is that the man is a card carrying member of the APC. And if you have a card carrying member of the APC, mismanaging the subsidies that are said to be given to El Importer, what is the APC government going to do to him? There's nothing they can do to him. You go and do, do the tax check. All the critical probes that the APC has tried to carry out in the House of Representatives and in the Senate have always been aborted. Take, for example, the attempt to probe the Niger Delta Development Commission. Take, for example, the attempt to probe the National Emergency Relief Agency. Take, for example, some of the other attempts to probe uh, the pensions um, office. All of them have come to nothing. Say, for example, the, uh, the desire to probe the Nigerian army when the National Security Advisor said the army, the army generals have been mismanaging the funds that are made available to buy arms and ammunition. What became of that probe? So in my humble opinion, it's a mere waste of time. Okay. For the APC or anybody to have the APC to start coping the first of the thing. It's been done in the past. It didn't give any desired result. No, but, but, but I mean, the someone, the, the House of, I mean, the Speaker, we're talking about uh, Femi Bajabia Miller now. The, the hearing, that investigative hearing that they refused to show up for is to ascertain the daily consumption of, you know, the country, how much do we consume as a nation? Well, you have mentioned, I mean, you have stated what um, uh, you, you think it's... You don't need the out of breath to determine or ascertain the liter or whatever that we consume. No, but that, that's not the, the case. Liter. There was an investigative hearing that they did not show up for, and that's why they've been summoned. However, we need to move away from that and right. look at uh, the Nation newspaper. It's, it's about the uh, governor of River State and the PDP crisis mm -hmm. that some people say is still lingering. So you have on the Daily Independence, Wiki and his backers soft pedal and agree to work for Atiku's victory. Now, on the other hand, you have uh, the Nation saying Wiki rejects one-on-one -on -one pally with Atiku over crisis. What exactly is going on here with these papers? Well, it's not impossible that we can see in very teacher about the way he was treated or undermined during the PDP convention when he aspired to be the flag bearer of the PDP. The man spent a lot of money, he spent a lot of energy. He went around the country and he got assurances from different quarters that they were going to vote for him. But at the last minute of the convention, the rug was removed from under his feet when the governor of Sokoto State, Alaji Aminu Tambua, stepped down for Atiku, which is left paved the way for Atiku to win the the race for the flag bearer, presidential flag bearer of the PDP. I think we can see not happy about that. Furthermore, his refusal to have a one in one with Alaji Atiku, I am of the opinion that that is very, very ungentlemanly. If you are within the same political party and the party to whom you lost in an election is inviting you to a party, I should want to agree that the owners should lie with you to also make peace. Look at the way uh, Mr. Shiwaju uh, Tinobu did after the convention of the APC. He went around all those who contested against him, 
trying to solicit their support, appeal to them, assuage their anger, and then assure them that the APC is still a family, and that in the best interest of all of them, as contestants, as a political party, and as a nation, they require to work together to win the next election. I should want to say that is the way a statement should behave, and not the way Mr. Wike is behaving. If Wike doesn't get, uh, doesn't work with a people, if the BDP don't solve their problem before the next election, they will just hand over the election, I mean, the victory at the 2023 election to the APC on the platter of gold, which is not going to be too good for the PDP, for the Arankan file, and for the Nigerian people. We want to see a very stiff competition based on ideas, based on ideology, based on the quality of persons that are flying the flag of the different political parties, and not to hand over the race to the APC on the plot of gold. Okay. Uh, we also have the punch newspaper here. I mean, it's... Uh, it talks about COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 cases jumped by 67% in two weeks. A lot of Nigerians have actually thought that, you know, COVID has gone on holiday because if you move around, uh, the protocol is not being observed. People are going about your businesses. Uh, hardly can you even find a person wearing a nose mask and uh, what have you. So uh, it's just quite surprising that the cases have jumped by 62% in two weeks. What is going on? Well, our people have become a little bit relaxed, a little bit uh, careless on one channel. If uh, you don't mind me to use that language. Even when the COVID was at its peak, so many Nigerians never believed that uh, there is a pandemic that is called COVID. That's when you will see them put their nose guard on their chin. And some will wear the, the nose guard as a kind of arm, arm band. The implication of that is that most of them really don't care whether the COVID is a reality or just an assumption. So that the disease is on the rise now, as it has happened in a place like China not too long ago, a few weeks ago, could be attributed to this uh, lack of belief or carelessness or nonchalant attitude of our people. When you go to most of the public places now, like banks, the eateries, the motor parks, nobody's enforcing the wearing of no mask in those places they came. The hospitals have also become relaxed. Some of the facilities that were quickly assembled or built to treat COVID-19 um, infected persons have been dismantled. The warning to us with this rise in these last few weeks is that COVID-19 is a reality and that it is still with us and that it's too early for us to lower our guard. We should insist that people continue to wear their nose masks, they continue to wash their hands, they continue to maintain high level of hygiene, whether in the public or in their private homes, until the United Nations or the World Health Organization declare that COVID has been defeated all over the world, just like smallpox was once defeated all over the world. Um. Tunde Kolawale, so w w yes. will you blame Nigerians for acting the way they have acted? I mean, you talked about the fact that a lot of persons have not believed in COVID at the time, that this virus called COVID. So you, you have a lot of people not complying to the protocols that were being put out. But should you blame yeah. the people? Is it not that uh, 
it's more like it's a trend and we're following the pattern. So uh, let's not forget that at some point you have the United Kingdom, you have Britain lifting up all of its protocols for COVID and saying, hey, we're not imposing the nose max and wearing of it and all of those protocols. People can go about their businesses. We also saw that even the restrictions that were put on uh, for those who were going to leave Nigeria to other parts of the country where you have to show uh, the fact that you have been vaccinated, all of that taken away. So uh, do you blame Nigerians for not... Um, observing the protocols or it's because we're just following a pattern and so if it's been lifted in other countries it means it doesn't really exist do we even what? know what we're dealing with are we even on top of the situation because it feels mm. like we're just copying we're following a pattern yeah well i agree with you that the most part of the world like i was watching france tv uh, yesterday and they have opened the floodgate for tourists to begin to again to come to their country. And most of the influx of the tourists, most of the people who are going to France now, some who are going to China and the UK, all the restrictions have been relaxed. But you see, the difference is this. We are uh, the people in some of these advanced countries of the world, have the expertise, the wherewithal, and the resources to manage any further outbreak in COVID-19. We, on this part of the divide, don't have that kind of uh, wherewithal. And that is why it would have been better for us as a people to be more circumspect, to be more careful, not just to follow those who have the wherewithal to deal with the disease uh, sheepishly. Because here, we really don't have the means to really fight the disease. Most of the COVID vaccine that we are using were those ones that were given to us by these foreign countries. As of today, I'm not too sure any country in Africa is manufacturing the COVID-19 vaccine. It was South Africa that uh, the World Health Organization was trying to assist to build a COVID, I mean, vaccine plant. I'm not too sure that the plant has become operational yet. So while the advanced country of the world could relax, the COVID-19 restrictions are no longer. We on this part of the world require to be a little bit uh, uh, circumspect in the way we approach it. All right, so another one on the Daily Independent talks about INEC. I mean, this is really fantastic, if you ask me. And uh, moving ahead, I mean, getting close to 2023, Nigerians will be very excited. Feels like some hope. We have devised ways of rendering talks useless during polls. And you know that during our elections, the presence of those talks, despite the fact that you have uh, elections constantly militarized, but you still have that thugs thrive. So um, INEC is saying uh, that they have actually come up with a way of rendering these talks useless during our elections. Does this excite you and does this bring hope for democracy? So you can you take that again? We have devised ways of rendering thugs useless during polls, during the elections. This is what INEC is saying and we know we're getting close to the 2023 elections and it is no news that uh, our elections are being dominated. We constantly have the presence of thugs who truncate, you know, the process at one point or the other. And now you have INEC saying, hey, we have found a way to make them useless. And the question here is, does this excite you? And is this hope for our democracy? Well, uh, if you look at the INEC, some of the things they have requested for, some of the amendments that they have suggested should be inserted to the electoral act. If you look at the amendment to so their rules and regulations and what happens, you want to agree that ANEC is trying his possible best to make sure that we have a free and fair election in Nigeria. But the truth of the matter is, as soon as INEC takes a step with regards to the sanctity and the free and fair election, the Nigerian politicians 
would have taken five other steps to undermine the activities of INEC and to make sure that the election uh, did not become free and fair. Look at what happened recently in the Kitty State. INEC did all its uh, possible best. The materials arrived on time. Their staff were on ground on time. And the security people were also deployed to all the right places. But didn't the Nigerian politicians find a way around this? They did. They went, building their own cubicles, close to the high-neck high polling boots, the Yama certain homes where they put their men, who asked, who sums of money with them, where voters were being called to be paid, to be bribed, to vote for one political party or the other. And from the report, we got from the CSO, and you, the journalist, and the observer, it was obvious. All the three leading political parties that participated in the Kitty election did engage in buying and selling of their votes. Uh, we, we need to we need to go now. Thank you so much. And uh, All right. I mean that's because uh, we are really out of time. And we need time to move on. But we appreciate all of you the insights you have brought this morning to the headlines, the perspective that you've shared. We appreciate your thoughts. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you. Well, right then, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Tunde Kolawale, as a legal practitioner and also public affairs analyst. Uh, we appreciate you. Looking forward to have you on the show next week. And as I said, on after press, we take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at our first major conversation right here on the breakfast. Stay with us.